Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and this is 10 Minute Workshop, where 10 minutes in the workshop is never enough. It's never 10 minutes, and it's never 10 minutes wasted. In the workshop this week, while well, as well as being cold enough to wear a gilet, uh, I'm making some, uh, we're, we're continuing the, the gift idea theme, and I'm making some little trays. That's coming up next. So yeah, these are just little trays, uh, not kind of dinner in front of the TV size trays. These are more cup of tea and a biscuit size trays. Um, I'm making them out of birch ply because it's uh, you know quick and easy. Uh, I make them very similar to how I make uh, the slim sort of draw boxes, 12 mil half inch birch ply outer and a six mil base. And we start by getting some birch ply cut to size. Using my combi squares trick to line up my guide rail, I'm ripping 65 mil or two and a half inch strips from the sheet of 12 mil ply. Then moving over to the router with a sacrificial fence, I'm running a 6mm deep groove in the strips with a quarter inch grooving bit. Then cutting them to length on the miter saw, and trimming the 6mm birch ply base to size. So the way I'm going to join the ends to the sides is, we call it a, a rebate joint. It's a little bit like a lap joint, but you only put that in half of the material. Um, it's very simple, very straightforward. You just take away half the stock from one of the sides and the other side just butts into it. It sort of effectively doubles the gluing area that you've got on any joint. Um, and I'm going to use, there's all kinds of way of cutting these. I'm going to do these on my mitre saw because it has what's called a trenching facility. That's where the blade doesn't come all the way down into the material. You can, you can stop it at a, a certain point. This is slightly over halfway because I want to be able to finish this off. Um, if you don't have that, then obviously you can make that cut with a router. You can make it with a hand tool, hand tools. You can do it with a, you know, a saw and a chisel. Um, if you want to practice your hands, hand tool skills, uh, I'm going to do it the quick and easy way because time's of the essence. Uh, trenching cut followed by another neat little trick to clean that, uh, that edge up. Now one thing you do have to do when you do a trenching cut is because the blade is circular, fairly obviously when it goes, it's designed to do a full depth cut when you're right up against the fence. When you start to bring the blade up out of the bed of the saw, it doesn't reach all the way in, so you have to pack the fence out slightly, so you bring the material away from the fence uh, in order to get a full depth of cut. With the fence packed out and a stop for consistency, I'm making repeated cuts through the end of the ply, moving the workpiece slightly each time to clear the rebate. Now it's got to be said, um, this kind of trenching cut uh, it's it's not the sort of thing you normally see in this kind of work. It's mostly uh, the sort of thing you find it on on construction sites, on building sites, that kind of thing. It's the sort of thing where you do just to quickly notch a joist to to whack another one into it or up against it or whatever. Um, and it does leave a slightly sort of you know uneven finish because you're making several passes at it with a saw. And all we're going to do, we're going to clean this up. Again, there are lots of ways you could do this. Uh, 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 Traditional way, if you like, is on uh, in a in a router table with a rebate cutter. You get a nice clean finish on that. I'm going to show you a real quick and easy way to do this. Though and we're going to make our own little sort of thicknesser. So there we have it. A nice flat reference surface. We've got our rebated uh, side. We've got a little block of wood with some sandpaper on it. We've got a couple of four mil thick packers. Uh, again, always worth having a couple of these around, a little bit of double sided tape, you pop some double sided tape at either end of the sandpaper, and you just pop our four mil packers onto the double sided, and there we have our little thicknesser. We run this back and forth. When there's no more coming off, you know that that's four mil thick. Lovely. So a little tray sides 
need a little sort of handhold in them. And I've done this sort of shape. It's very simple, just a 20 mil uh, hole at either end, 100 mil apart, uh, and just round it over. I actually did this one freehand, so 20 mil spade bit at either end, uh, cut the uh, close to the line with my little folding Japanese pocket saw and then a bit of sanding to clean that up. A little bit more time consuming obviously. So what I've done, I've used that as a, as a basis to make a template like this. And I'm actually going to use a, a template uh, cutter, a bearing guided template cutter in my router. Uh, it's really simple and easy to use. You just mark up the centre line on the side of the uh, tray, put it in place and you're good to go. With the jig clamped up tight, it's a simple matter to cut our handholds. Finishing them up with a little light sanding. Now when it comes to gluing these up, it's incredibly simple, incredibly straightforward. Uh, really, it just sort of slots together, just like the sort of draw boxes that I make. We run a bead of glue into the groove squeeze at either end spread that out nicely with a brush face goes in I'm repeating this around each side, taking care to have enough glue in the joints, though not too much, before clamping it up tight and setting it aside to dry. With the clamps removed, the tray gets a thorough sanding, and then a coat of oil, starting at the inside and using a brush to reach right into the corners, and finishing off with a stockinette cloth. So there we are, quick buff over with a soft cloth once the wax has had a chance to harden off and that's our tray project pretty much completed. Um, I don't think I mentioned the size of this actually. Uh, I, I made this one the size I did because that was the size of the birch ply offcut that I had and the finished size on this little one is about 240 by 360 mil, so only little. Um, as I say, it's you know, you have it next to you on the sofa with your TV remotes and your scratch cards or whatever else. Um, uh, if you're feeling, if you have bigger bits of, of scrap available, or if you're feeling a bit more generous, you could, of course, make a nested kind of set of three like this. Uh, and again, if you don't have sort of bits of birch ply big enough, you could put a painted panel in there, or do what I did here. Um, this is fablon, this is sticky-backed plastic. That phrase will resonate with you if you're British and of a certain age. Uh, and of course you don't need the same colour both sides, you can make it a bit more fun like this. Or have a sort of, you know, a bit more traditional gingham all through. Um, but that's it, they're quick and easy to do. I hope you've enjoyed this little build, I hope you've uh, found it interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share out amongst your friends and uh, do consider subscribing. If you haven't already done so, well, hey, just check back on a Friday when there's always something new up at noon. I'll see you then. Take care.